Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Circle Word Problems. Today we'll be solving word problems involving circles, and we're going to be using the BEST method. In this method, we're going to read our word problem, and then we will box keywords and numbers. We're going to eliminate unnecessary information. Then we'll strategize, and in this case, we'll be using formulas. Finally, we will total and restate our solution. So let's get started with an example. A grocery store is frosting the tops of cookies. If the widest part of each cookie is four inches, how much frosting will they need for eight cookies? So first I'm gonna start with my B for box. So I'm gonna box tops of cookies. In this case with circles, I need to be paying attention to whether I am going to be covering something using the area or finding the distance around something, which would be my circumference. And this part of the problem helps me identify what they're asking for. Next, I see that widest and four inches go together. Widest is going to give me a clue about a part of the equation that I, or formula that I'll be using for my circles. Next, I see at the end that it's talking about eight cookies. So after I find the amount for one, I know I'm gonna to have to do something else to find the total that the store is needing. The E in our best method is for eliminate. Eliminate unnecessary information. I don't have any unnecessary information in this problem, so I can skip that step. Next, my S is for strategy. So my strategy here, I'm gonna look at each part that I have boxed and identify what is happening in the problem and how this is gonna help me get to the answer. So the first part, tops of cookies, I know that that is talking about area. So they're asking me for the area of a circle. So I'm going to write that formula down. Area equals pi times radius squared. The next part of the problem told me that the widest part of my cookie was four inches. Whenever I am going across the widest part of a circle, I know that that is referring to the circle's diameter. So since this diameter is given, I can go ahead and write that down, d equals four. Finally, I am given that there is going to be frosting eight cookies in total. So I know I will be multiplying by eight at the end. If I know how much one cookie is, I just multiply to find out for eight. Now I'm ready to fill in my formula and start solving. So whenever I'm using the area formula, notice that it does not have diameter in it, it only has radius. So I'm going to find the radius for this circle. So if the diameter is four, then that means that it's going to be four divided by two for the radius. So my radius is two. Next, I'm going to put that information into my formula. So I'm using 3.14 as an approximation for pi. And I wrote multiplied by two multiplied by two because I know when something is squared that it is repeating the base. And the base here is two. After I put those in my calculator, I end up with the area is equal to 12 and 56 hundredths inches squared. But I have one last part for my best strategy. And that's going to be the T for total and restate. So I'm not quite done with this problem yet. My total, I have to multiply by eight at the end. This was an important part in this problem, multiply by eight at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my area of 12 and 56 hundredths, multiply it by eight, and I end up with 148 hundredths inches squared. So now I'm gonna restate my answer, my solution, in a way that makes this make sense. So how much frosting will they need for eight cookies? They will need 100.48 inches squared of frosting. Let's try this with another example. In this example, a ribbon is wrapped around a cardboard cylinder. If it can wrap around seven times and the diameter of the cardboard cylinder is three inches, how long is the ribbon? Once again, using my best strategy for word problems, I'm going to use my B for boxing. So I'm going to box wrapped around because I am wanting to always know if I am filling in the circle or going around the circle. It says it wraps around seven times that's gonna be important to know when I find 
my either area or circumference, do I need to multiply it by anything? And then it actually just gives you the diameter, so you don't have to figure that part out. Diameter is 3 inches. My next step is to eliminate, and I also do not have anything to eliminate in this problem. However, you do need to make sure that you do that step for each problem, as sometimes they do give you unnecessary information to try to trick you up. My next step is the S for strategize. So I'm going to be using my strategy by looking at each box and asking, what is that telling me? In the first box, wrapped around, that is describing circumference. So it's asking me for the circumference of this uh, shape, which will tell me how long my ribbon is. My circumference formula is C equals pi times diameter. Next in the problem, it told me it was wrapped around seven times. So this information doesn't help me till the end, but I do need to write down that I will be multiplying by seven at the end, because if I have wrapped around something seven times, then I am going to be multiplying. Finally, it tells me the diameter is three inches, so I can just go ahead and fill in D equals three, and now I'm ready to start solving. So in this uh, problem, I'm going to use my formula, and your approximation again for pi is 3.14, and I'm just going to multiply that by three, because pi times diameter is the circumference. When I multiply, I get circumference is equal to nine and 42 hundredths inches, and I'm ready for my final step of T for total and restate. So when I total this, remember I had to multiply by seven at the end. So nine and 42 hundredths times seven is gonna give me 65 and 94 hundredths inches. And then finally to restate, the ribbon is 65.94 inches long. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe to watch this and other videos.